I will show you some peculiarities and features that this hydroelectric station has. And I'll tell you how we can enhance the station. We will get the electricity if we have the torque. The main advantage of the hydroelectric station is its constancy. This is unlike the solar panels and the wind electric stations. The energy here flows forever, day and night, not depending on the weather conditions. And having the electricity for free makes free anything depending on it. You can use the electric pump to get some water. You don't need the gas, you can use an electric oven. You can forget about the wood too. You can use an electric heater to warm yourself. And you can use all these amenities of civilization living in the forest. It would be nice to have some internet there. When I got here for the first time, I found out that unfortunately there was no connection. The distance didn't let the signal get here. As well as the mountains, this place is surrounded by them. The TV signal is pretty easy to get, buy a satellite dish and watch TV in any place in the world. We use the 4G modem to find an internet signal here. And while we were searching for it on the roof, we've hardly managed to get a weak one. But if you assemble a simple Wi-Fi antenna like we did, you can easily provide yourself with fast internet even living in the backwoods like this. But what is the cost of this hydroelectric station? Well, it isn't easy to value it because we used everything we could find around to build it. But I can say, certainly, it is much more cheaper than the solar station of the same power. Let's face some difficulties. The first one is a kind of unexpected. The voltage dependent on the load. It was found out why were you using the engine from the washing machine. It had a winding for 220 volts, so we've got them for instance. But it is not that simple. It turned out that the voltage is highly dependent on the load. So if the load of the washing machine's engine is too high, it starts to slow the turbine. It slows the torque and we lose the power. And when you turn on a small bulb, the power of the current grows so greatly that the bulb is getting burned out for a few seconds. So to avoid the over voltage we had to plug in some extra bulbs. And of course when you turn on the equipment you must plug them out. And it doesn't sound very convenient to control the voltage literally with your own hands. Oh come on, would you refuse the free electricity because of this? It all was going like this until one thing happened. One day in spring the ice got a crack and drifted down the river. And this caused a rapid increasing of the flow for several minutes. This happened so far that no one could turn off the extra bulbs. That day all the electrical equipment got burned, including the TV. There is another drawback of the generator we used previously. It gave 6 watts sharp. Consequently, nothing consumed more than 600 watts could be started. I mean plugged in. Even the refrigerator needs more than 600 watts when it starts, so we couldn't use it. And thus we needed to improve the generator. We had renewed the winding of this new generator made of three-phase motor and adapted it to the low voltages. Now the voltage gets to the accumulators and they source 220 inverter, which made the electricity constant and stable. And thus sourced all the appliances. While these batteries accumulate power, the electrical circuit provides the electrical appliances with a little amount of power, at night for example. And when you need more power, these batteries will source the inverter with some extra voltage. After this improvement we can plug in any devices. The amount of energy they consume is limited only by the power of the inverter and the maximum voltage the batteries can store. And starting from now, using the electricity there has become nicer and easier. And now it's not very different from using a usual 220 volt socket. The only thing you need to keep an eye on is the voltage of the accumulators. Don't let them dry. At least don't spend faster than they get the energy. To avoid the over voltage of the accumulators, we've set here the energy controller from the solar panel. It is linked to the generator with a cable directly. And the voltage gets right into this dies we've taken from a car. This kind of HES has its own drawbacks too, and the first is, it is expensive. The inverter we use is pricey, it's around $600. The accumulators aren't cheap too, we've got them as a donation, otherwise we couldn't use them. The second drawback, the distance to the generator from the HES is pretty long, so there are some losses of the electricity because the cable is pretty long. 
We used to have this inverter, but for some reason it didn't survive after some time. We didn't know exactly whose fault this was. Fortunately, the manufacturer has considered our claim and sent us another one. The technology of this inverter is based on the pulse transformers, so owing to this technology it has great power and low weight. We like how it keeps out the voltage. Even when we turn on the fridge, the inverter doesn't let the voltage go lower. I can name only one drawback of this inverter. It's very noisy, I can hear it whistling and cracking. And some other devices connected to it start it being noisy too. Maybe the inverter has a weak surge protector and there comes a great amount of interfering sounds. It influences watching TV process the most. And we know that sound is important. Today we use this inverter, and this one has a giant low frequency transformer inside. It works stably for a long time with no accidents, and now there are no noises at all. However, when we try to turn on the fridge, there comes a big voltage instability, but it really doesn't influence anything, so it's not a drawback. The voltage controller regulates the voltage inside of the accumulators. Can't tell anything bad about it. And it has the option of manual regulation of the voltage, the maximum power of the voltage and the charging voltage, and this is great for us. I didn't build this HES myself, I'm here just to tell you about it. I'm here to share you with the idea of the HES. You will find the link of the owner of this HES below. In future I would like to come here again. When I make to get here, I would like to work on its improvement. The main thing we have to do is to increase the maximum power up to 2 kV. And this would be enough to keep the buildings warm using the HES. I can't say for sure what we are going to rebuild, but there is an awful lot of ideas. Judging by the comments, we really should make a shaft shorter to increase the usability of the torque. And we need to remove all these connectors, because they make us lose lots of energy. The generator must be closer to the turbine. And we should take care if it won't be washed away with the river. We have to replace the variable transmissions with a reduction gear because it's more efficient. Thus the generator will be able to have faster torque. We didn't decide yet which reduction gear we have to use. If we make a turbine enough powerful, we will be able to use more powerful 220V generator with the stabilization of the voltage across excitation winding. Or otherwise we can use a regular stabilizer. This way we'll do without an inverter and the double conversion. Thus we will lose less energy. We can upgrade the dam itself or change the angle of the pipe. Now the pipe lies horizontally, but we can make it more vertical. Share your ideas, dear watcher. I will try to read them all, and later we will show you what we've done. Though I can't say it will happen soon. So subscribe not to miss this one.